Tank Industries was established by Trig Vidston in 1985 as a development company for the telecommunications industry. One of Tank Industries' developments was the TK re-entrable splice closure for use on pressurized, air core and jelly-filled cables. In 1986, after an extensive survey of the world telecommunications industry, we decided to make a major capital investment and establish a manufacturing plant for the TK re-entrable splice closure. The standard manhole installation procedure now follows. 1. Position the cables to be jointed and remove any dirt from cable jackets. Two, remove the TK re-enterable splice closure from its carton. The splice closure is packed fully assembled to ensure supply of all components. An installation procedure brochure is included with the carton. Three, remove the Jubilee clip and the two half clamps. Four, Decide on the most suitable way for the splice closure body to slide. 5. Slide the large end cap onto one of the cables and the body with the small end cap still fitted onto the other end. 6. Establish the center position of the cable splice and mark this position. 7. To establish the length of the sheath opening, measure the length of the main splice body and subtract 200 millimeters or 8 inches. 8. Now working from the center position outwards, mark off the sheath opening. Nine, clean and abrade the cable jacket 300 millimeters or 10 inches back from each mark. Now shrink the large end cap into position using a standard butane or propane cable splicer's gas torch. The end of the inner heat shrink sleeve should be approximately 25 millimeters or one inch back from the sheath opening cut to allow for earth continuity bonding of the cable sheath. Once the cap has been shrunk into position, the cable sheathing can be removed according to standard jointing practice. Twelve. The conductors are now spliced using standard splicing practice.
13. Splicing of conductors is now complete. 14. Slide the main body sleeve over the splice and couple to the large end cap using the two half clamps. This will automatically establish the correct position of the small end cap, eliminating any accurate measuring by the cable splicer. Fifteen. Now shrink the outer heat shrink sleeve of the small end cap into position. Sixteen. Disassemble the closure and slide the main body back down the cable, thereby exposing the inner heat shrink sleeve of the small end cap. Seventeen. Protect the splice area with aluminium foil or another suitable heat barrier and shrink down the inner heat shrink sleeve. 18. Complete the earth continuity bonding. 19. The splice closure may now be assembled. Check that the O-rings are in position, undamaged and clean. Slide the body back over the splice and fit the two half clamps. 19. Re-entry procedure. Re-entry is simply a reversal of the final assembly procedure. Remove the Jubilee clip. Remove the two half clamps. Remove the locking ring. and slide the main body away. Splice area is now exposed for testing or rearrangement. Reclosing procedure. Reclosure. Check O-rings are in position, undamaged and clean. Slide the body back over the splice and fit the two half clamps.
fit the locking ring. Fit the Jubilee clip and tighten. Using your C spanner, now tighten the locking ring. Splice closure is ready for pressure checking. Retrofitting a cable. One, open the splice closure to expose the splice area. Two. With a suitable screwdriver or punch, knock out the undercut spigot end section. Three. Slide a heat shrink sleeve onto the new cable to be fitted. Then feed the cable through the entry spigot. Four, use a suitable heat barrier to protect the existing splice area. Five, now shrink the inner heat shrink sleeve onto the new entry spigot. 6. Shrink the outer heat shrink sleeve, starting from the cap and working outwards. 7. Now splice in the new cable conductors. 8. Slide the main body over the splice. 9. Fit the half clamps. 10. Fit the locking ring. Eleven. Fit the Jubilee clip and tighten. Twelve. Tighten the locking ring. Thirteen. Splice complete.